morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to this program. Let me start by acknowledging the Vice Chancellor of Elizabeth University, Professor Luca Ide Amon. I'd like to also recognize the registrar, Mr. Monolu Adegbenro. We would like to also recognize the BOSA. I call him the Chancellor of the Exchequer of the University, Mr. Ashegun Ajeigwe, the coordinator of the library, SN Guana. We also like to recognize the Dean, the Faculty of Humanities, Social and Management Sciences, the home faculty of this program, and the father of our department and the uh, faculty, Professor Joseph Fabayo. Mr. Charles Ottoman of the International Labor Organization is recognized. Mr. Austin Arame of International Labor Organization is also recognized. Uh, distinguished participants, professors, lecturers, we welcome you to Elizabeth University. Media personalities here present, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me first of all actually congratulate the International Labor Organization and the Department of Mass Communication at Elizabeth University for organizing this strategic train the trainers program on improving labor migration reporting in Nigeria. This is a welcome development in partnership and reaching out to journalists through the educators to understand the nuances of labor migration and related issues. It is also to achieve the university's traditional tripartite role of teaching, research, and community service. Now, during this training program, what are those issues that will be coming up for discussion and for some elucidation from the experts? Of course, um, they are not exhaustive, but we'll be talking about the post-COVID-19 adjustment that has changed the world in terms of working, in terms of the economy, and then of course, the challenges that, is, that, are, that are facing the world. So post-COVID-19, a lot has changed and immigration uh, labor issues are also inclusive. High migration uh, pressures in terms of global multiple crisis, there is crisis everywhere. And so you expect that there'll be uh, migration, there'll be refugees and so many issues. Uh, we, we, the discussion will also cover areas like Western Balkans, uh, uh, Middle East, North Africa, Central Mediterranean uh, migratory routes, Ukraine and Russia war, the recurring transnational and border crisis. Crisis is not only global, it's global because it is everywhere, within communities, within states, within the countries and countries. Forced labor and fair recruitment will also be some of the issues that will be discussed. Then there'll be debates about visa regimes in Europe, uh, and as well as Africa. The issue today is people are asking, why is it that to travel between Africa is so difficult? If you want to travel outside Africa, you need to uh, possibly go to Europe before coming back to Africa. And you can imagine what happens when we talk about migration. Global supply chain and cost of living crisis on migration, global economic downturn, labor shortages everywhere. I'm sure you are all familiar with Japa syndrome, uh, which is the terminology in Nigeria, which one comedian explained at the point that it is packaging yourself, your certificates, your skills, your creativity, and then you export it to other countries uh, to go and add value. Well, I'm sure a lot of that to come up. Climate change, part on migration and asylum and massive migration of Nigerians, skilled professionals to Europe and Americas. Uh, recently, there was an issue where the uh, National Assembly was going to pass a, uh, was trying to do a bill that will now prevent people from uh, moving um, from one from Nigeria to other countries. Uh, we don't know how that how practical that one will be. So journalism that we are talking about is about journalism is actually is about information. Uh, it is news, it is breaking news. You see every day we hear about breaking news, breaking news. Uh, journalism is captivating. Journalism is the television, the radio, the print media, traditional media, and the ubiquitous uh, social media. 
it is, as somebody defines it, it is the events of the day distilled into a few words, sand or pictures, processed by the mechanics of communication to satisfy the human curiosity of a world that is always eager to know what's new. All of us have seen how social media has changed uh, our world in terms of communication. Um, Edward Barney's um, premise is understanding of communication uh, the fact that uh, it is an art applied to science. That's why we're in Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, an art applied to science. And then he recommends that the education needed by a media practitioner must be broad to enable him, and I quote, cope intelligently with the problems and adjustments in a democratic society. Well, there are societies that may not be uh, democratic uh, as as much as people want it to be, but most nations, most societies today aim to be democratic. And that a BA degree, I'm, I'm quoting uh, Barnes again, that a BA degree with honors and emphasis on humanities and the social sciences from a good university seems to me a good prerequisite for a successful career with graduate courses in communication, public opinion to be followed by working internship. Elizabeth University has done very well because every long vacation, all our students actually have to have one uh, internship or one attachment or the other to, practical, uh, uh, to practicalize what they've been taught in class. So journalists in the post COVID-19 era and with the incursion of artificial intelligence, cut seat chat DPT4 and other variants, makes it important, imperative on journalists to add more substance to their uh, practice and to sharpen their investigative and reportorial skills in formulating winning strategies for corporate goals, reinforcing positive public opinions, promoting social responsibility, supporting all around social economic development and to mainstream labor and migration issues. Today, economic and political advantages come through technology as there is a convergence of all media and the digital and electronic media. Before you could almost put a knife through and say this is print media, this is electronic media, this is broadcasting. And of course, with internet and social media, there is a convergence today. And that makes the job of journalists easy when reporting on migration or when writing their reports or when looking for the story and then captivating their audiences. Media reporting and framing, uh, that is, uh, uh, that, is um, that is balanced and focused on societal development. We continue to be strategic in the public uh, sector of Nigeria as well as a private sector with the apparent societal determination to consolidate a democratic culture and expansion in the economy in spite of the global upheavals, the need for skilled media specialists will continue to be increased. To be able to play these special roles in matters of labor and migration, journalism ought not to elicit cynicism, skepticism, and poor perception, which is one of the bane of journalism today. People don't believe what they read. People don't believe what, they, uh, what uh, the media is reporting, whether it's on television, radio, and of course, the social media has its own characteristic that uh, promotes disinformation, misinformation, and even malinformation. Malinformation is the worst of them when people deliberately decide to massacre institutions by by false report, they just conjure some kind of stories. And you can imagine somebody who is migrating has a reason why he's migrating. It might be a refugee, it might be seeking for asylum, it might be uh, looking for greener pastures. And so when reporters uh, uh, are not able to capture this and understand the complexity of that particular situation, then there's a problem. Going forward, then the academic, the academia 
in, in most traditional uh, professions have been able to synergize both the theory uh, as well as the practicals. These traditional professions have been very successful and respected because of the synergy developed between knowledge-based theory and actual practice. As Stuart uh, Bruce in 2013 puts it, and I quote, without academic rigor and a historical perspective to support practice, we are limited to craft and tactics. As a practitioner, channels and tools may change, but if your practice is rooted in education and continuous learning, your core knowledge will be readily transferable. The message is what the International Labor Organization is trying to bring to, the, to our classroom, to our students, and they're taking the right steps in supporting and propagating this synergy. The communication curricula in universities must therefore be rigorous and be responsive to societal developmental challenges. Certificates and degrees, yes, but application on a, for a generation and then, then the generation of ideas are very critical and in an, are very critical in an increasingly globalized world of unprecedented labor migration like never before. I mentioned the issue of Japa uh, earlier. And honestly speaking, more and more countries today are talking about, we want people to come. Imagine the US that you will find it very difficult to get their visa. Uh, of course, it's a, it's a by, uh, by, by, um, by modern relationship. Uh, they, have given, they are now giving Nigerians five years visa. Um, I mean, that means, uh, uh, average, on the average, somebody can stay for one year without even uh, without even bothering about uh, uh, being challenged. So many more countries are doing the same, and who knows what is going to happen. So the International Labour Organization has taken a bold step in embedding migration and other labour matters into the mainstream of academics around the world. I think this has been done in Asia and even in some parts of Africa. So it's coming to our doorstep and we're happy about it to be part of this uh, new initiative. The EU mass communication, the Elizabeth University mass communication department plans to commence its media and migration studies uh, during the 2023-2024 academic session. As a matter of fact, uh, this, uh, the approval is being processed now with the National Universities Commission. And I trust that most of my colleagues here we also take the same steps. So let me end by acknowledging especially uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Uh, Omolola Olaride, the astute and erudite and dynamic international researcher whose specialization is in migration economics for midwifing the partnership between Elizabeth University and the International Labor Organization. Thank you for the opportunity. I also want to give special thanks to Austin Erame, the ILO program officer and coordinator of the Fairway program. And of course, uh, Charles Otterman, uh, the ILO consultant and the author of the Media Toolkit. By the way, the Fairway program and Media Toolkit are those two documents that will be used to, to, to run this uh, training program. So we are, we, we, we are appreciative of your wanting to work with us and we believe uh, with you, we'll be able to make progress. We are trusting that this is the beginning of a long lasting partnership in reaching out to these desperate uh, audiences with communication that builds better and more sustainable global societies. To all our participants, all our colleagues from all around Nigeria, we thank you and we trust that you will embed labor and migration studies in your mass communication curricula. Once again, thank you very much. And I appreciate being given this opportunity to make this comment. Thank you.